Hi folks, VM Explorer here and in today's uh, video blog uh, we're going to go through how to create a custom ISO for your ESXi installs. So you might be asking the question, why would I want to create a custom ISO uh, for my ESXi installs? Well, a lot of times with home labs or, or just production systems in general, uh, you'd like to have a set of network drivers, maybe cards or special array controllers, uh, the drivers installed on the ISO because they're not included by default. Uh, it's pretty common and a lot of times you have to use different programs to do that. Uh, today what I want to show you is the, how simple this is. Literally nine steps to create your own custom ISO. Uh, it's a pretty simple process but first let's start with the card and understand that a little bit and then we'll progress to the steps. So what we're looking at here is uh, a few weeks ago I decided to move to 10 gigabit Ethernet and move away from InfiniBand and one of the things I decided to do was start looking at cards and that's when I found this card here this is a uh, HP uh, NC523 SFP plus card right nice card 10 gigabits uh, basically and I started researching it one of the things I noticed right away about this card is uh, a it has the SFP plus ports which are nice I can use cheap DAC cables to interface that into my MicroTik uh, 309 I believe it is uh, 10 gigabit switch uh, I definitely recommend checking those out nice little cheap switch but the one thing about this card I also notice is it requires a um, uh, X, X8 or an 8x uh, PCI slot uh, and when I look at the vendor manufacturers information on it it clearly calls that out uh, one of the mistakes I made was I, I slipped it into a, a 4x slot thinking I could get away with it and sure enough it uh, did not operate properly so definitely I recommend when you start looking at these cards first off you might want to look at the manufacturer website see what's going on with it see how if it's compatible a little bit and you know really that's the balance with home labs right we're looking for cheap cards things we can do uh, this one's sixteen dollars so as an example uh, cheap hardware uh, but the latest software it's a balance right and it can be difficult sometimes and uh, when you get it right and you get it working it's uh, very rewarding but this card sixteen bucks it's an HP card really it turns out to be a uh, QLogic card which is now owned by Marvel um, but we can see here that at one point, uh, you know, ESXi, I had some flash uh, image out here for the card, which wasn't too bad, so I could be able to update it hopefully if I need to. And then also some of the drivers. A little bit older, looks like this one might be for uh, 6.0 and uh, uh, 6.0 U1, U2, and some drivers for 5.5. But definitely looks like there's a driver set here for 6.1, or excuse me, 6.0, and uh, I might be able to get away with that slipping it into 6.7. Um, and, and that's kind of what I start looking at. I look at the card, see if there's drivers out there. Are they current? Are they relevant? Can I might be able to use them? Uh, and then I look at the hardware compatibility list. Now, the hardware compatibility guide um, is the guide that VMware publishes for us to go through and check things. In this case, we want to switch to uh, I.O. devices. And we want to start punching in those numbers. So let's start with the NC one. Okay, there's the HP one. All right, so boom. Sorry. Uh, couldn't find it. Alright, well these are keywords, so maybe it just doesn't like that keyword. Maybe it likes the uh, QLE3242. Let's try that. And boom, once again, sorry, uh, no luck. So right now it's showing not on the uh, on the HCL. But then again, let's think about this. We're We're looking at this HCL and we're basing the whole entire guide on the keyword. Maybe there's a better way to pinpoint this device. Okay, so if you go to my blog vmexplorer.com and you look in the blog series under a section I call the gold bind, and those are just little tidbits that I like to keep track of. There's a neat little blog right here about how to pinpoint specific hardware devices with VMGA Check Dev. Okay, so let's take a look at that blog real quick. This blog will actually show you how to go in to your host, issue this command right here, and that's a dash L as in llama. And what it'll allow you to do is to print out a nice organized list of all the vendor IDs to the associated devices. Okay, so as you can see on this very last one here, uh, uh, this HBA controller or storage controller, we can see its vendor ID and its associated device IDs, sub IDs, etc. These IDs right here, I can put directly into the hardware compatibility guide, and it actually will pinpoint the exact card that we have versus taking a guess. 
So, for example, I know that controller is a uh, M5210, I believe it is. And if I hit search, wow, look, I get a lot of different cards. So I'm not quite sure which one is my exact card. And that's what these codes are going to do. So check this out. So we're going to go over here. We're typing 1000 was the first number. Okay, there it is. Good. That's a good sign. Uh, 005D. There he is. Oh, 5... D. There we go. And down to the next one, 1014. Okay, excellent. It's there again. Okay, and our last one is uh, 0454. I'm just typing those directly in, and then they go. Now, when I say view results, hey, look at that. Look, it specifically hit the exact card I had in that device. And that's why this is really nice, is you just go right into SSH, for example. Here, I just ran this a few seconds ago on my host. There's that same one. But now... What we're really interested in is this one right here. This is that NIC card, that QLogic NIC card. The question is, is we couldn't find it doing keyword searches, but now the question is, can we find it doing device ID lookup? So let's try that one. All right, so let's slide back up here, and now we're going to do 1077. Oh, hey, that's good. There's one hit. Okay, our next one is 8020. Oh, good, two hits. All right, our next one. It's going to be 103C as in Charlie. Oh, good. Three hits. We're doing pretty good. Now we need to get the fourth one to get it right. And this is 3733. Three, three, three. Oh, and that looks like it doesn't find it. Let's look at the three sevens. So, yeah, as you can see right there, there isn't a 3733. Three, three, so, this one is definitely not on the HCL. And even if we just do all and we say updates, it's not there. So clearly, at one point, this card was probably on the HCL, and it fell off for various reasons, support, they didn't recertify it, didn't make drivers for 6.5, whatever it was, it fell off the HCL. But for a home lab, it's a pretty good sign, right? Uh, it's a pretty good sign that uh, uh, we, uh, it has a good chance of working. So let's try and work with this card. Okay, and let's build a ISO for it with nine easy steps. All right, so what we're going to do, let's get all our information up here. The first thing we got to do is we've got to download the drivers. So we need to get the QLogic driver. In this case, it could be a different driver for you. It's going to be some sort of bundle that looks like this right here. And when you open this up, you're going to find inside of it an offline bundle. That's the one you want to target and bring out. Bring it out of here and have it ready to go because we're going to put it in the depot and we'll explain that in a few minutes. The next thing you need to do is download the uh, the update zip file for the ESXi version you want. In this case, we want 6.7 update 3. Those are the two files you need to work with. I just dropped them into my local C temp folder and then I launch Power CLI. With Power CLI, and now I start my commands. The first thing I do is I build my depot. Let's explain that in a minute, but first we enter in the first one. These are basically just putting in the files that I want to work with. Okay, that one's added. All right, here comes the next one. And in it goes. Okay, so let's just make sure they're both registered in there. And there they are. So basically, we just made this software depot, and it just says, these are the files I want to work with. So now we tell the software uh, depot we want to get the image profiles out of it. Okay, so look at those files. Tell me what profiles you have for me to work with. Now, a profile is just a, uh, a way of, uh, you know, making a certain type of build and different developers like IBM, Dell, etc. could come in here and say, okay, well, I want to work with a standard, I want to work with a no tools one, and I want to build a custom thing, and I want to put some software packages in there for drivers that might be relevant to a specific hardware type. And then they release that to you. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Step five here, we're going to clone one of these existing profiles and make one of our own. Okay, so in it goes. All right, and that's what we did. So we said clone profile. We want to choose the standard profile. Okay, that's the one listed right here. And we're going to make a new name. We're going to call it basically the same name. I'm going to add QLogic onto it with a vendor of QLogic. Now, I could put Matt. I could put Joe here, Bob, whatever I wanted to put in here. And I could put any name I wanted. But I'm just going to leave this because this makes sense to me. And, and I'll remember that's QLogic drivers for my home lab. All right, getting down to step six. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to take a quick look at the software packages and see, make sure the driver that we're looking for there, a QLogic driver, exists. 
So get software package Q. There it is. So now there's the driver we're targeting. That's definitely the, the right number, the right vendor, the right product. This is the one we're targeting. We want to add that to our profile. Okay. So now we're going to do that right here. We're going to bring this over. We're going to start building the software package. Okay. So it needs a profile name. So we'll start with the one we, we cloned put that in and now we're gonna add our software packages in this case I'm gonna use that whole name including the uh, the version number I'm just gonna copy and put it right in there and boom I don't have any other software packages to add but I could if I had like other drivers I need to add like uh, HBAs or different NICs I could add them in here as well but I don't so I'm gonna push enter and it's done so it's at basically what you told it to do was to add this driver set into this profile and it's done now let's just kinda of confirm that the actual um, profile is there or the drivers are in that profile excuse me alright so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just get our name list here of all our profiles okay there's our profile we cloned right there okay now we have to do a comparison and we're gonna compare that one to the standard one that we cloned it from. Okay, so let's put that in. And there goes the compare. So we're saying compare the QLogic profile that we created with that software package we added to the reference profile, which was standard. What are the differences? And it says it right here. It shows me only in the comparison, okay, or the one we created, I see this driver right here, okay? Only in the ref, no changes. So it clearly shows me that just the, uh, the one we created has that particular driver that's what we want so now with the driver basically slipped in there we're ready to create our ISO in it goes takes about maybe a minute or less and there it is done so now we've created our ISO here it is right there we just created it today it's about 320 megs and now I can use this ISO with my slipstream drivers to set up my ESXi 6.0 update 3 host and life is good. Well folks I do hope you enjoyed this uh, quick video uh, and if you like what you're seeing here click on subscribe I'd really appreciate your support. Thank you so much and have a great day.